Okay, one of the last things uh, I mentioned, uh, we're going to go into some clothing issues here, but the only accessories that this guy really has that are really prominently figuring, I remember I mentioned earlier that there's really not much of a separation at his neck here between the clothing and the and the head, uh, basically because it's, it's conceived as a skin-tight outfit on the character, but we're going to go over that with the... Uh, the separation of the mesh between the head and the body. Uh, there's some other issues though with actual clothing. It's got some gloves, some armor stuff here, and one of the things I want to block in right now uh, are some of those objects. Uh, some of them we'll do in surfacing, like these pads on the thighs. We can do through surfaces uh, defined on the, the previs model, the animatic model. Same thing with some of the belts and uh, buckles and stuff on his feet shoes, gloves, and whatever. Even down to the fingernails, we can handle a lot of that stuff in surfacing, even though these are really, these seem really thick. So you can actually, you know, you can make that up uh, on your own whether or not you want to block these in on your uh, animatic model. But for now, I'm just going to uh, surface them. But this belt definitely is something that I want to block in. Since the geometry that underlies it isn't uh, in the same orientation, it's obviously a V, a v formation here uh, with a slight, uh, it looks like a, uh, a little Yeah, this is a good point at which, uh, you know, I'm going to go in here and save another version. And if you're familiar with the keyboard shortcut Shift S, if that's one of your defaults, you can see up here in the uh, the, the version numbering that I'm using the underscore V00, uh, the basically three-digit uh, naming convention, because Shift S will automatically give me Shift S V006, uh, and automatically I've got you know in my dialog. I've already had a couple other versions of this. I've got the new version, and it's really important for some people to have that kind of versioning power available to you. But at this point, we're really, uh, really at a good, pretty good point to start uh, maybe refining the last few details that you want to put into your animatic model or not put into your animatic model. Uh, uh, like I said, you know, some of the other things that I want to put in here, you know, maybe I'll, I'll take these last few subdivision objects and freeze them. Um, maybe that's a little too much. Uh, I'll bring this down to, you know, the default of three freezing. And if you didn't know that already, that's the uh, subdivision, subpatch subdivision uh, uh, quantity that uh, that gives you a higher amount of uh, mesh density when you freeze your your subdivided objects. Uh, pretty much done that for everything, so that there are only a, a handful of subpatch objects left, uh, which can go ahead and freeze at that level. Should be fine. Well, at this point, I want to start, you know, uh, defining some surfaces and things like that, and refining a few last things. Like this last, really, um, to me, it's kind of an interesting port. It, it's always well drawn on superhero characters. This uh, area around the rib cage, I believe, is called the, the serratus anterior. Uh, really interesting, you know, the way people draw this. A lot of artists are famous for. You know how much detail they put into the you know uh, different sort of muscles, and this is one of those areas that gets exaggerated so heavily and prominent. And right now, we're ready to start um, surfacing this guy. Uh, you can kind of use uh, use the basic uh, colors from here, and that's that's what I'd suggest doing. If you had you know an RGB picker, if you want to go back into your image editor and you know actually trace or excuse me eyedropper. Uh, sample all of these tools, but we can tell uh, there's a handful of things, you know, there's just, we need uh, several dark reds, a handful of yellow colors. We're not going to block in the logo yet. I, I think that's best left to uh, a texture tutorial. Um, but yeah, you can you can take uh, your eyedropper tool from your your concept art, you know, and, and actually annotate all these colors uh, ahead of time. If, so, if you don't have a production coordinator who might have done that already. Uh, it's simple enough to go in there and eyedropper those tools, but you know, it, remember that if we're not going to, um, if you're not going to render this character uh, using some sort of sh uh, cell shader uh, simulation of some kind, you know, uh, where the colors are going to be accurate 100% to the the uh, concept art, uh, we're really just going to use these as a base because um, I, I was told that the art direction I've already communicated with uh, some people who. Uh, about this character uh, prior to actually building it, that one of the goals was to have it uh, kind of similar in look and art direction to The Incredibles, which is one of my favorite favorite films, definitely. Uh, uh, but that the, you know the the end result of those renders, uh, you know, it's 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 something that you know the surfacing uh, is going to look very different. So these are just base colors, 
and we're going to go in there and block in a lot of that surfacing uh, based on some of that uh, without without a lot of you know uh, at this point in time it's just you know color and maybe a little bit of specularity so let's start doing that